can't remember what you said. Jesus said, take this cup, drink of me, take this bread, think of me. These were the words he spoke to me. So whenever I'm lonely, I won't forget. I remember, yeah. What you said, I remember what you did. You have made all things new, God. I remember you. I remember you. I won't fall. Rest. I'm all you need These were the words that you spoke to me So whenever I'm lonely I won't forget I remember what you said I remember what you
thank you for this day. We thank you for another opportunity to share your word, another opportunity to win souls to Christ, another opportunity to feed your sheep and allow us to grow in your word. We pray that as your word goes forth, that the ears are open and attentive and got ready to feast on your word. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Still talking about giving. Still talking about giving this entire month. Um, but today we're going to be talking about where to give. There are certain areas where we should be giving. Uh, if you have your own business, if you're an entrepreneur, I want you to just lift both of your hands right now where you are, in your living room, in, in your front room, in your office. And um, I want you to lift both of your hands. I'm praying for a financial breakthrough. I'm praying for doors to open for you. I'm praying for new contracts. I'm praying that God has a huge door for us that he's going to open between now and before this year is out. And he has new territory for us in business. He will present opportunities for new streams of income, new businesses, new contracts. Things will begin to birth in you that you probably didn't even see yourself doing. All because of your obedience and giving. And I want you guys to go back and look at this month's teaching. And I want you to apply it to your life. And you will be blessed. There are three secrets in gaining wealth. Giving, working hard, and saving. If you understand giving, if you understand hard work, if you understand saving, I believe that you can be a wealthy person. The grace of multiplication, that's a tongue twister. Y'all know I can't talk. Y'all know I make up words now. The grace of multiplication in finances does not come through prayer. The religious folks ain't going to like this. The grace for multiplication in finances does not come through prayer. It does not come through laying hands. It comes through sowing. Everybody say sowing. Anyone in the kingdom of God who is a giver, they will be big and great. If prayer was the answer to finances, me and all the intercessors will be rich by now. But dig this. You can be a prayer warrior. You can be an intercessor. You can, you can know how to pray to paint off the wall and pray for 24 hours a week. 24 hours a day, and you still be broke. Because for financial prosperity, to obtain the grace for prosperity, for financial prosperity, that anointing only comes through giving. Remnant church, that's the only way we can obtain it. The Bible states, this is what the Bible says. Whosoever gives sparingly, reaps sparingly. There is no reaping if there is no sowing, church. I want to say that again. There is no reaping if there is no sowing. How can you gain wealth? How can you receive something from God or from anybody if you don't give, if you don't sow a seed first? How can you get mangoes off a tree if you never once sowed the seed in the ground? You can preach and die. Right? Right? Preaching does not bring, a lot of people say, oh, he's a preacher, he got money. You, listen, preaching does not bring finances, but giving does. You can preach and die leaving your family in debt. Like the woman who went to Elijah and said, uh, my husband, your servant, fears the Lord. He dies, and we are in debt. This year, and the year coming, 2022, these are serious years, church. If you want to take your finances and wealth to another level this year, try God. Try giving. Try sowing. Test him and see. Whatever achievement you have achieved so far, multiply it by 10. If you are giving, if your giving ability is weak, step it up. It's for your best interest. You may be successful in your eyes. You may have good contracts lined up. But it will never materialize. You will be in the spirit of, oh, I almost got it. Or, or I almost had a breakthrough. Or I almost got the job. Or I almost got approved for the house. I almost got the car. Simply because you are not a giver. Don't let that be you. Don't be afraid to give at any given time. Be an adventurous giver. Go off the spirit. When the spirit moves you, move. 
When the spirit moves you to give, give. Don't allow your thoughts. Don't allow your mind. Don't, don't allow rational thinking to prevent you from giving. Your breakthrough is in your giving. I'm giving you the keys right now. I'm giving you the game right now. You want to prosper? You want to get out of debt? You want to have more? You want to live the, the abundant life? You want your barns to be filled with plenty? You need to give. Don't act on it. Don't let your mind stop you from doing it. Your spirit will say so a thousand dollars. Your brain will say, no, nah, that's too much. Let me just put five dollars in this in this bucket. Let me just send this five dollar cash out. Your breakthrough is in your spirit, not in your mind. Your mind will talk you out of your blessing. God is releasing a great anointing now for finances. Because this is this is an anointed service, whether you know it or not. But you must be a sower, a giver. You can't get nothing from nothing. We have to become aggressive givers. Find something to always give. You're probably saying, well, where do I give, Pastor? The very, very first place that we need to give is on the altar. Why is that? Your power is determined by your altar. The level of your power is the level of your altar. What makes your altar powerful is the, is the dimension of the sacrifices you place on it. An altar that receives small sacrifice will release small power. An altar that receives huge sacrifices will release huge power. The fire of God would never fall on an empty altar. The fire of God would never come to an altar that has no sacrifice. What have you laid at the altar of God? What have you laid on the altar of God's feet? Your altar may have demands where you are asking for something and a lot of prayers going on. Give me this, God. Give me that, God. But if it has no sacrifice, nothing will happen. Hallelujah. What are you sacrificing on your altar? The bigger the sacrifice, the bigger the power. This is a virtual church. So you're probably saying, well, where's y'all altar at? We have a virtual altar. And after every service, we go to that altar and pray for those who are seeking prayer. We go to that altar and we lay down sacrifices for those who are seeking prayer. Those who want to give their life to Christ. We, we, we labor in prayer at our altar after service. You want to be a part of it? Sign up. Go to the rooms at the church. You'll see it. We give souls back to God. So we have an altar. Those that are in business, God is going to release something big to you before this year is out. I'm telling you, God is going to release something. Every business person on here, I encourage you to leave here today being a giver. Whatever you have, whatever you have not sealed remains vulnerable. Every promise, every prophetic word, every prayer prayed over you. If it's not sealed, it remains vulnerable. I'm so glad that I had the opportunity to share wisdom with you because I believe we need to understand giving on a different level. I watch and study churches, right, in Africa, and I marvel at their faith and obedience to God. In the African community, it's rare that you see any pastor in the house pray for someone and after that person received prayer, after that person received a prophetic word or anything from the man or woman of God, it's rarely that you see that they just say amen and go back to their seat. Rarely say that. That's a no-no. They will drop an offering. Not because the pastor needs the offering. They're not giving it to the pastor. They are giving it to the word. They are giving it to the prayer prayed over them. They are sealing it because whatever is not sealed remains vulnerable. Knowing that the devil goes around like a roaring lion seeking who he can devour. I remember a few weeks ago, my mom had a word for somebody that I know. She doesn't know the person, but I know him. So she called me and she asked me, she said, hey, the person that do your, you know, your video stuff, you know, call him. Y'all know who it is now. Pastor Nick, I was trying to keep it secret. So, uh, I'm like, why you want to talk to this person, mom? You know, you know, I'm afraid of what she was going to say to him. And so I called. I called him. called Pastor Nick. called him on three ways. So my mom began to tell Pastor Nick what thus saith the Lord. She had a word for him. 
And the person received the word. Pastor Nick, he received the word. And he called me and he asked me, he said, hey, man, what's your mom cash out? He wanted to sow a seed. He wanted to seal the word that was spoken over his life. Because if we don't seal the word that's over our life, it then remains vulnerable. He put it to practice. And I don't think a lot of us have been taught that. So this person sealed the word that was spoken over his life. Oftentimes for big miracles, we use little keys to seal it. Unless you understand the spiritual things that goes with your giving, your miracle will never manifest. I challenge you all to do this giving exercise as you come to church and Bible study. I challenge you. You don't have to do it. If you don't want to be blessed, then don't do it. But I challenge you. If $50 is a lot of money for you to give, I want you to give those $50 to God because it's a lot of money for you. If $100 is a lot of money for you to give, I want you to give it to God because it's a lot of money for you. After you've done it five times, you will forget about it and it will no longer be a lot of money for you. Whatever you believe is a lot of money, set yourself to give it to God every time you come to church and watch how God moves. Watch how God, watch how things become, become uh, present in your life. We got to seal those things that are spoken over us. We can't just say, I receive it and walk off. We can't just say, I, uh, amen, and walk off. We need to seal it with an offering. Not just in this church, but even when you are visiting a church. If $1,000 is a lot for you to give, give it every time you come to God. After a while, it will become chump change to you. Whatever the amount that's challenging for you, Give it. Give it. Give it to God. For my young millennials, there are three things that we must master if we want to get wealth and remain in wealth. Giving. Giving. Working. Laziness will produce poverty. A man's dignity is in his work. Work hard. Have some passion for what you do. Don't just do anything. Do something that you have a passion for. Saving. Giving, working, and saving. Saving. We can't spend everything. Save some for your children. Save some for investing. Amen. If we do this, church, we will always have the best of the land because we will always have a provision. Hallelujah. We pray we fast. Some of us don't fast. Some of us, we just pray. But we pray, we fast. But what about our giving? Where are we at on the totem pole in our giving? Let's step our giving up at the end of this year, going into the new year. Let's step our giving up. What is it that you are planning to do for God? What is it that you are setting yourself up to do for God? Has it ever even crossed your mind? Have you ever sat and thought to yourself, man, this year, you know what? I want to do this for God. I want to do this for the kingdom. I want to do this for the ministry. Has it even crossed your mind? Lord, I will give you this. Lord, I will fight to give. This new year is approaching. Have you even said to yourself, this coming year, I plan to give this amount to God? Or are you just thinking about what you want God to do for you? What can God give to you this coming year? Is that what you're thinking? Oh, the new year coming up. God, I want to do this. I want to accomplish that. I want this new. House. But what about, what are you going to do to God? What are you going to give to God? Last week, we just talked about honoring God in our first fruit. Have you, have you done that? Are you planning to give God a first fruit this year? My giving of yesterday, I don't remember. It's gone. Shoot fly. Our giving is always today and tomorrow. You're saying, with well, dog, I just gave for the building fund last month. That was $1,000. That was yesterday. We can't sit back and say, I just gave. No, it doesn't work like that. We can't say, I ate yesterday, so I'm not going to eat today. We can't say that I took a shower yesterday, so I'm not going to take a shower today. No, if we have the mindset of I gave yesterday on yesteryears and I can't give today, we will stop growing. Is there anybody that wants to be a serious giver on altar live today? Lift your hands and say, God, I want to be a serious giver. Say it like you mean it. Say it and be serious because you don't need the gift of the Holy Ghost to be a giver. Hello, somebody. A serious giver. We must engage our will. 
We got to engage our will. Say it like you mean it, all right? To be a giver, a serious giver, we must engage our will. To be a serious giver, it may delay some of your plans. You may have some things planned, but you say, you know what? I want to do this for God because it's going to bless your life. We must engage our will. Make it a part of who we are. I want to become a serious giver. I don't know about you, but I can do better in my giving. I can do better in my offering and my seed. You know, when you become a serious giver, it's not when you hit the lotto. That's not when it happens. It's not when you get that big contract. It's not when you, it's not when your ship comes in. It's always now. You can start being a serious giver now, today, this morning, with what you have now. Now, on your level. Don't worry about brother man and what they're giving. Give on your level. Some of us, our giving is below our level. Some of us, we, we way below what we can do. You can be a serious giver now making $5 an hour because you don't have much. You can be a serious giver with a million dollar salary. But we have to engage our will and move when the spirit says move. So this morning, I want to pray for two types of people. God wants to make a deposit this morning. God is about to make a deposit in your life. Something huge is about to happen and land in your life. But we must be a now serious giver. A serious giver that understands the now. Wherever you are now, you can be a serious giver. Now, I share with you the three places that is important to give. And the rest follows. But the first one is very important. The first place that we need to give is on our altar. Meaning. The house of God. We need to give to the house of God. Number two, the work of God. And number three, the man and woman of God. Giving to the work of God includes ministry, the media department, what you see us doing right now, operations of the church, sending missions or missionaries. That's the work of God. The house of God, meaning the altar. Although we are a virtual church, we have an altar. And if God says get a building, you know, we're going to be ready for that too. But give on your altar. Give in the house of God. Give in the life, into the life of the man and the woman of God. Even if the man of God is a multi-billionaire, give. You don't give because of him or her. You give because of you, right? Giving is for you. It's for you to be blessed. A lot of times we give, we think people want to take from us. Giving is to bless us. And may God deposit something huge in your life. Prayer, and, and I want to pray, Lord, Lord God, we commit to serve you in our finances. We bind up the, the spirit of stinginess. We bind up the spirit of disobedience when it comes to giving. We commit to you and make you the center of our wealth. We commit to give you what we have. Oh, Lord, today, anoint our finances. Break stagnation. Break the spirit of no progress. Break the spirit of delay. Break the spirit of slow progress. Open our doors to wealth. Increase financial growth over our life. Bring multiplication in our finances. We decree and declare that today our debts are paid off. Our finances are blessed. We will never be poor again. We will grow in wealth. We will build the house of God. We will stand with the men and women of God. We will support the work of God in the name of Jesus. Before you today, God, we make a commitment to be a serious giver. No longer will we rob you. Shower us with your blessings that, that there will be no room to, to receive. Now, now, I want you guys to close your eyes and I want you to think of something serious. Think of something serious that you could do, that you would do for God this week. Something you can do for God this week. Some of us will be able to do it today, tomorrow, payday, whenever. Think about that. Get that thing in your head. And this is a serious matter, church. Think of something you can do with your seed today that you know it is important, not only to you, but it's important to God. Look around this virtual church. Those of you that are that are on Ultra Live and got your cameras on, take a look around the virtual church. Sometimes we know what needs to be done. We know what the church needs and we do nothing. Think of those three places, the altar, the work of God, and the man and woman of God. And by faith, I want you to sow in Jesus' name. I pray that uh, this month you've been blessed with this series of teaching. Trust me, it was a lot. 
We talked about giving your life to Christ. That's a great place to start. We talked about the four types of giving, tithes, offering, alms, first fruit. We talked about first fruit specifically last week. And then today, where to give on the altar to the man and woman of God and to the mission of God. Three places to give. You have to be encouraged. You have to be motivated. You have to respond so that you can be blessed, so that God can open up the wonders of heaven and pour you out a blessing, so that he can rebuke the devour for your name's sake. God is ready to bless you. God is ready to, to activate the promise Do in your obedience to his word. So I want to pray for those today that want to give their life to Christ. And you can join us uh, at the altar, on the altar, after this service is, is done broadcasting. Just click the room to the altar and we'll be there waiting for you guys. But I want to pray for everyone right now. Father, we thank you for your word. We thank you for this series of this month in giving. Father, you are a giver, and so we just want to follow your footsteps. We want to be more like you in our giving. Every area of our lives, we want to be like you, but especially in our giving. God, you said that you give seed to the sower. Thank you for blessing us that we are in a position to give. Thank you for allowing us to be a son, to be a daughter, and to come to you whenever we are in need. Father, we seal every word spoken over our lives with a seed, with a offering, in the name of Jesus. Father, bless those that come to give their life to you today. Wash them clean in your blood. Forgive them for every sin. Father, let them not return no more. Break every stronghold. Break every generational curse in the name of Jesus. Father, allow them to grow in you. Every Sunday as they come here, in Jesus' name we pray, amen. Father, we thank you for your word. We thank you for every giver. Bless every tithe pair, every offering and seed giver. Father, everyone that is obedient to your word, I pray a double blessing. In Jesus' name, bless those that have not. Bless those that are suffering and going through a season of life. Father, continue to be with them just as you were with us in our city. Strengthen them where they are. Father, you said that we are poor. You, you, begin, you came poor so that we can become rich. Father, you want to do thing for us. We thank you for the financial blessings. We thank you for good health. We thank you for a sound mind. Bless them in a mighty, mighty way. In Jesus' name, amen.